Your name is what? How old are you, Kevin? Three. Here are some sugar cubes. Count the number you eat. Okay, you can have all the sugar cubes you want. Go on, help yourself. Even knowing what I know, the word sugar still has incredibly pleasant connotations for me. My mom called dad sugar all the time, and occasionally me. And I just can't look at the stuff without feeling a little happy. Despite all the ways it's delivered to us, powder, cube, grain, processed, natural, brown, white, turbinado, or honey from the bee, or syrup from the tree, and no matter what we call it, dextrose, sucrose, fructose, or whatever, it's sugar. And sugar is sugar. And there's a lot of money in it. Millions of dollars worth of empty calories change hands every Halloween, the number one day in the sugar business. Then follow the other holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and of course, Valentine's, the day specially consecrated to sweethearts. There's even a day when a bunny rabbit lays plastic eggs containing sugar wrapped in pretty foil. That's the fourth biggest sugar day. Scientists at Princeton University fed sugar to rats for several weeks and then took it away from them. The rats showed opioid symptoms identical to drug withdrawal, such as the shakes and teeth chattering and high-pitched crying and anxiety, even changes in brain chemistry. This looks like food to other people. To me, this is, this is heroin. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just like put it right in my veins. And in fact, and in fact, I might even pick the fruit off. Just because, just because the fact I know that actually some of it's good for me and I just want it, none of it to be good for me. Right. And um, <laughs> get rid of the fruit and just crunch down on the rest of it. Terry is a pastry chef in the one profession that regards obesity as evidence of success. She fights sugar addiction continually, and today it was a losing battle. Have you had any sugar today? Yes. What did you have today? Um, I had uh, leftover uh, birthday cake frosting from my son's birthday on Sunday. Just the frosting? Just the oh, frosting. In other words, you had the frosting in yeah, the fridge? And... No, the frosting was on the cake. I just uh, took a fork and um, skimmed, away. skimmed away off of the, uh, the frosting, then, then I got... Um, Really embarrassed when my three-year-old found me doing that, and so I gave him a tiny sliver of cake, and then I took the rest of the cake and I threw it into the sink, and I ran hot water over it, and I scorched it up with got my rid hands, of it. and I got rid of it. But I didn't get rid of it before I ate a good portion of it. Probably eat too much sugar, um, and uh, you know it's marketed to them in very insidious ways a lot of the time, like breakfast cereal or you know things that are supposed to be good for them. What do we do? Where did it go? What will become of the fruity part of this good breakfast? The honey sweet crunch of honeycomb cereal. Part of this good breakfast. Big news! Lucky's added great green clover marshmallows to Lucky Charms. We're getting closer. It's part of this good breakfast. I remember I was in high school terribly addicted to Hostess uh, products. I actually used to shoplift <laughs> Hostess products, and actually, they caught me one time. I'll never forget that. You didn't have the money, but you had the craving right. so much that you needed right. to get your fix. Yes. And yes. And as I became an adult, the craving became more and more to the point where I, as an adult, 
I really learned about binging in a big way. Uh, I can eat a lot of sugar in a very small period of time, you know, because I'm too ashamed to buy like a dozen candy bars in one place. I would go to like three or four 7-Elevens and buy three candy bars in each one as if somehow the guy behind the counter was making some judgment about me about, oh, that guy's going to eat 12 candy bars. I've met people who can eat, you know, uh, a cookie and just go like, oh, I had a cookie and go away. Right. You know, and not that's you. that's not how my body operates. It's uh, it doesn't really do anything for you all that nutritionally, and it just you know it, it 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 makes you crave it. If I were to eat a candy bar right now, not now, but later, I would go like, ooh, must have sugar, you know, and I'd sort of go around and try and you know get that fix. It is like a fix. It is. I, I mean. It's totally drug-like to me. Sugar devastated Jonathan's health. I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. He became obese, tipping the scales at more than 300 pounds, and then... I was diagnosed at 38 with type 2 diabetes. But who would look to sugar as a cause of degenerative disease? Dr. Judith Halfrich researched the effects of sugar for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We've done a number of studies in both animals and in humans, and found that when we replaced complex carbohydrates, starches, with simple sugars, that a number of cardiovascular risk factors went up. When you were consuming lots of sugar, did you find yes. yourself getting sick a lot? Yes, at the age of 31, uh, I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. If they ate starch or complex carbohydrates, their cardiovascular risk factors were lower than when they ate sugar. 